We've all been there. One second, you're going for your morning run, and then this guy is chasing after you. In these final moments, many things run through our minds. From, why did my father never tell me he loved me? And of course, what build can even counter the T-Rex? And if your final thought was the latter, I'm gonna teach you about one that might be able to. Welcome to How To, and this is How To Triceratops. First things first, let's understand the lay of the land. Triceratops lived in the Cretaceous, specifically Cretaceous North America, specifically, specifically Cretaceous Laramidia. This is just the Western United States, but it's important to note because you're gonna be separated from the East by a gigantic seaway. This strip of land boasted everything a dinosaur could need, from lush coastal plains and dense forests, all the way to giant mountain ranges. This diversity made it prime real estate for both herbivores and carnivores. Living here means you'll be facing intense challenges, especially as a newborn Triceratops. This is because you'll be starting off life as an egg, and eggs aren't exactly known for their durability. That's why your mom laid plenty, hoping that some would avoid being eaten, stepped on, cracked, or carried away and raised by monkeys. Who knows? But if you are able to avoid all of this, it's still not over yet because you're just a little guy in a world full of things that like eating little guys. Now, for us non-Triceratops players, things get a little blurry here. Do your parents raise and protect you? Are you left to survive out on your own? Do you join our herd? Does a Mosasaurus literally come out of the water, kiss you on your forehead and tell you, everything gonna be all right? We have no idea. Bones can really only tell us so much. All we do know is, this stage is going to be the hardest part of your life. And if you're alone, things are going to be a lot harder. So right now, you're only about the size of a bulldog. And while you're wrapped in a thick coating of scales, you're still pretty weak, which means threats, they're going to be abundant. The only way to avoid this is to get bigger, which takes time and lots and lots of food. Lucky for you, your ancestors have evolved you into a sort of food devouring machine. Some would say the lawnmower of the Cretaceous. That's because you are armed with the perfect tool designed for a life of heavy grazing. Sitting at the front of your mouth is a beak, which you're going to use to make easy work of all those thick fibrous plants, which are then chewed by rows of sharp teeth at the back of your mouth, grinding them way down to fuel up that soon to be giant body. Hence why the stage of life for the Triceratops is typically referred to as the grind time. Your life for a few years is just going to look like this. Eating, 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 and more eating. Don't be too discouraged though. Eating is kind of fun and Triceratops have a very fast growth rate. And in only 10 years, you could be fully grown. So you'll be seeing the fruits of your labor pretty quick. And would you look at that? You're already getting bigger. All that hard work is finally paying off. You've about reached the status of a young adult. That means a few things are going to be different since being a baby. Of course, one is that not everything's going to be able to eat you now, which is always a plus. Also that, you know, you got larger. And even still, while you're technically not fully grown, soon you will be. And when you are, you'll be about 26 to 30 feet long, 10 feet tall, and weigh in anywhere between six to 12 tons. That's double the weight of the largest elephants alive today. However, it isn't just your size that's going to be keeping all of your predators at bay. Instead, it's the unique way you defend yourself. And if you thought that had something to do with your tail, then you'd be an idiot because actually it has something to do with this giant head. And you know, that kind of makes sense because the name Triceratops literally means three horned face. And well, because your head will legitimately take up over a third of your body. Seriously though, your head is massive. But don't listen to the bullies because while this skull might seem a little outrageous to them, and it kind of is, in reality, this size was necessary. That's because your skull is the most important feature of your build. Everything is built around that head. Without it, it would be like a bird without its wings, or Jehona without the sponsor of this video. Okay, turns out I don't actually have a sponsor. Seriously though, your skull is probably one of the finest tuned works of art in the entire animal kingdom. It's this giant rock solid slab of bone, fused together and crafted into the perfect defensive machine. On it sits three horns. On the surface, these might look like your ordinary horns, right? We've all seen elephants and rhinos, but what's so special about these ones? The truth is, 
These so-called horns of the elephant and rhino are made up of ivory and keratin, which is basically just the stuff that makes up your hair. Whereas the Triceratops' horns were made up of straight up bone, which made them capable of withstanding extreme forces. The smallest is that nose horn. It's about a foot long, and it's pretty much just the dinosaur version of the rhino horn. We're still not exactly sure what they were used for, but it was probably defensive. However, the two larger horns situated atop your brow ridges offer clear insight to their function. Stretching over three and a half foot long, these formidable weapons served as the primary tools for attack and defense. Capable of impaling adversaries, a single strike from these horns would almost certainly prove devastating, even to a fully grown Tyrannosaurus Rex, or, you know, really anything that stands in your way. And that means other Triceratops as well. Yup, that's right. Just like every other animal, you're going to be fighting members of your own species. Whether these disputes are over territory, or mating, or whatever, we don't know. All we do know is, the aftermath is going to be ugly. That's because we found fossilized remains of Triceratops with holes in their head. Holes that oddly match the size and shape of another Triceratops horns. Some have been found with partially healed wounds, which means they were able to survive these fights. But don't think you'll always be so lucky, because we've also found Triceratops with holes that never healed. Besides kebabbing your Triceratops neighbors, your horns are actually going to be pretty important for other things as well. One of the most important will be for player identification. Let's take three of these snapshots of you for example. One is when you were a baby, the other a juvenile, and the last an adult. Can you spot the difference? If you said, then you'd be wrong because the answer I'm looking for has to do with the shape of your horns. Basically, when you're a little teeny tiny tot triceratops, your horns will face upward. And as you age, reach puberty, and continue to get older, your horns are going to shift to point outward. Make sure you pay attention to this, because this will help determine the age of other players and help with finding mating partners. This is something you probably don't want to mess up. But it isn't all about those horns. There's other things that you're going to need to utilize to unlock your full potential. I want you to think of it like this. If those horns are your swords, then your frill, a gigantic bony extension of your skull, is your shield. It can grow to be up to 7 feet wide, and it'll slope slightly upward and around your neck. As you can expect, this shield plays a major role in defending weak spots from predators, and you know, keeping you alive. This will do major work in deterring T-Rex from even attacking in the first place. On the other hand, some think the frill was just for sexual display, and would have been full of brightly colored scales to attract mates. But I say, why not both? But in my humble opinion, it probably had something to do with keeping this guy away from you. Okay, so all of this is great, but it really relies on you being able to get your head in between you and whatever is threatening you. That's why your head actually sits on something that is called the occipitable condyle. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's pretty much just a ball joint. That's because it's almost a perfect sphere and gives your head an insane range of motion. So if anything comes running up on you, it will allow you to turn your head quick enough to stop any attack that might be coming your way. See, I told you everything is built around that head. Now, there's one last thing that we need to talk about, and this is for legality reasons. Most players think Triceratops is a herd animal, but to be quite frank with you, we're not so sure. So don't go in there expecting to make friends, because there's a decent chance you're going to be having a solitary playthrough. However, there is a decent shot that you're going to be living in herds, or at least small groups. That's because many of the ancestral builds of the Triceratops did too. Many lived in gigantic herds, so I don't see why anything would be too different for you. There it is. Get big, use your sword and shield, and maybe go live in a herd. You now know the basics on how to Triceratops. Oh, there's one small thing you need to look out for. Sometimes the T-Rex can rip your head off. 